Hi everyone, it's Chris Davison here. I hope you're all doing okay and have just about recovered from Sunday. Uh, what a game it was in the end, eh? But uh, the boys certainly put us through it again, didn't they? Not that I'm surprised. It's Arsenal Football Club after all. Thank you very much for tuning in to my second show with and on the Chronicles of Aguna. Um, obviously, it was my first show last week and it got off to a very good start. The feedback's been really, really good and I appreciate that. Um, uh, so, again, thank you for the kind words and support. Again, this week, lots of questions coming in um, and um, really interesting ones as well on the manager or the head coach, I should say, on the team's performance on, on certain areas that need to be addressed within the team and um, certain individuals as well. So, like I said, there's been a few come in. Without further ado, let's get underway. So the first question has come in from Glenn, who asks, if Unai Emery gets us finished in a fourth place, not third, but with no trophies at the end of the season, does he deserve a contract extension? Well, for me, Glenn, if he does get us back to where we deserve to be, where we need to be, Champions League football, top four, then he deserves a contract extension, absolutely. But the question is, will the club give him that contract extension? I think, you know, based on the contract that Arsenal initially gave, have given Unai Emery, it seems like it could... Um, be that he is just maybe a short term option but obviously that remains to be seen if that is the case you know if Unai Emery does get us back into the Champions League this season the club could say thank you very much for your work Unai you've got us back to where we want it to be but now we want to maybe get someone in for more of the long run um, uh, someone who, who suits us a bit better who can address the, the issues that we've faced over the last couple of seasons there could be someone out there that they, they, they prefer. But we'll have to wait and see. Like I said, that it does depend on what the club is, is thinking and what the hierarchy are, are thinking and planning in, uh, for the long run. So, But for me, definitely, if he does get us back to where we belong um, and where we need to be <laughs> in order to move forward and compete uh, in the future, then absolutely, you and I, Emery, will deserve a contract extension. So, uh, second question comes in from Aaron who asks, is Emery going to address the same problems we are seeing every week? Most noticeably, the organisation when defending as it's not getting any better. I feel this win did, or all this win uh, did, was buy him extra time. Pressure is growing. Well, for me, Aaron, I think there was a similar question last week, actually. Um, and I think what I can say is that Unai Emery is a winner. He's passionate. He wants what's best for this club. And he will want to address these issues, absolutely, because if he hasn't somehow uh, woken up and, and seen the issues that we're having at the moment in regards to the, the defence and sort of the, the balance between that and the midfield, then uh, he's mad because it, it is costing us points at times. It's, um, it's making our overall performance poor, like we saw against Watford, like we even saw against Villa at the weekend. We were just so open at times and... You know, it, it is giving the, the, the opposition um, endless opportunities. And uh, we were quite lucky. We Obviously, we um, Villa didn't kill the game off on, on Sunday. I know we were obviously down to 10 men anyway. Um, but there, there has been times and there will be times where teams um, who are facing us will kill off games purely because our defence is just not working at the moment. Um, so absolutely I think Unai and his coach and staff will want to work on it they probably have been working on it um, uh, you know when you work on a training field things won't click instantly and when you're trying to get things perfect i.e. what we are trying to do with the defence and obviously with the whole passing out from the back thing which we've seen you know mistakes um, come from in the past things these things do take time unfortunately but hopefully I'm keeping my fingers crossed um, that that the team can can get it working soon because if we are to finish in the top four this season we need to be more solid defensively without a shadow of a doubt so i've just had to turn my light on because unfortunately it's turned pretty nasty out there and gone pretty overcast so if you're heading to the emirates tonight i hope you're going to wrap up and put some waterproofs on because i certainly think you're going to need to anyway back to the questions now and christopher has sent one in asking would you sell lacazette for a left winger if it means Aubameyang plays a more central role? Look, for me, this question is a pretty simple one to answer. Absolutely not, and I'll tell you why. Lacazette is crucial to this Arsenal team and the way that it plays. His work rate off the ball, 
His hold and building up play is second to none. His clinical finishing in front of goal, the passion that he brings. Look, I love this guy. And you know what? We are really, really fortunate to have him and Aubameyang at the club um, because in my in my point of view, they're two of the best forwards in, in world football. Um, look, I don't care if it means Aubameyang has to play in the wing more. I'm sorry, Pierre. But you'll still score goals from there without a doubt. You have done in the past. I don't care if... Aubameyang and Lacazette has to play up front together as strikers at the same time. There is absolutely nothing anyone can say to me which will make me change my mind on this one. So um, <laughs> that's my answer to that question. Um, now the next question it comes from Adiosan. I hope I've pronounced your name right there my friend. I apologies if I haven't. I'm rubbish with name pronunciations at times. But you have asked um, and you've been wanting to know all season what is your best midfield free? And what is my favourite midfield trio? Look, for me, to start off with, Lucas Torreira is a central defensive midfielder. We probably haven't seen the best of him so far this season, but this guy is very, very important to this team. To provide defensive stability in midfield in front of the back three or four, wherever we're playing. Um, he, he, <laughs> we saw him last season. He was one of our best players at times and really helped us in certain scenarios and certain matches. His, his energy, um, tough tackling, um, aggressive play was, was fantastic and he, he got us out of trouble a lot of times um, and I just think he's really important. Uh, it's as simple as that, you know, provide good balance and st stability in the midfield in front of the defence. In front of him I would have Gwendouzi, I don't think I have to go into too much detail about this guy because he's been absolutely fantastic for us so far this season. Brilliant on Sunday. Most of you have been saying he single-handedly changed the game. And to be fair, I find it hard to disagree. You wouldn't think he's 20 years old and was playing football in the second French tier um, a couple of seasons ago. You know, it looks like he's been playing at this level for a very long time. There are aspects of his game that he needs to work on and improve on, but I think that will come with experience and more playing time. And then along with them two, for me, it's a toss-up between... Sabayos or, or Willock. I think with Sabayos, I said it when he when he came in in the summer, we're very lucky to have him here. He's a very talented and, and, and gifted player who I think will help the team uh, at times. He perhaps has struggled to adapt to the, the, the pace and the, the physicality of the Premier League uh, uh, so far, but I, th I don't think that that will be an issue for much longer. I think he'll work on that. I think he'll get used to it. And I think he can be a really, really important player for us, um, uh, moving further up the pitch uh, uh, and providing a more attacking threat going forward. And it's the same with Willock, really. You know, he's done well so far when he's been called upon within the first team, quickly turning into a fan favourite. He done really well when he came on on Sunday as well. So yeah, uh, sort of those three or four players I would definitely have in my my midfield without a doubt, and that's certainly my favourite sort of setup as well. So guys, um, unfortunately I have run out of time now, that was my last question, but again it's been a, another great show to record, some fantastic questions sent in, apologies if I haven't been able to answer your question, um, but be sure to send them in again for next week's show and I'll do my very best to, to answer them all. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there is a game tonight, uh, it's Arsenal versus Forest in the Carabao Cup. I've just been able to see the team news. Kieran Tierney and Rob Holding are back in the starting eleven for Arsenal. Fantastic news, a massive boost for us with Hector Bellerin starting on the bench. So hopefully all three of them can get through the 90 minutes without any sort of problems. Um, uh, because look, we've, we've missed, as well, certainly Be uh, Bellerin and Holden, we missed them last season. Um, and, um, you know, with Tierney, obviously... obviously really excited to, to see how he does here at Arsenal so hopefully those boys can do really well tonight hopefully we get the win uh, and proceed to the next round and uh, yeah hopefully it will um, cap off a, a good couple of days for us so thanks very much for tuning in guys if you're watching this on YouTube please give this a thumbs up um, please subscribe to Chronicles of Aguna and like I mentioned earlier the feedback from my first show the other week has been really positive really good and I appreciate that so much so thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next week.